हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी एल एस आई टेक्नोलॉजी टूडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द फोटोलिथोग्राफी एज अ प्रोसेस वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन व्हाट इज फोटोलिथोग्राफी व्हाट इज फोटो रजिस्ट वॉट आर इट्स कॉम्पोनेंट्स वॉट आर द टू टाइप्स ऑफ फोटो रजिस्ट एंड वॉट आर द टू टाइप्स ऑफ फोटोलिथोग्राफी बेस्ड अपॉन द टू टाइप्स ऑफ फोटो रजिस्ट ओके सो आई होप यू ऑल हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इफ नॉट आई रेकमेंड यू स्ट्रॉन्गली टू गो एंड वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियो फर्स्ट देन कम टू दिस वीडियो हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑल ऑफ द स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व इन दिस फोटोलिथोग्राफी प्रोसेस एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दिस फोटोलिथोग्राफी प्रोसेस इज टेकिंग फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी परसेंटेज ऑफ मैन्यूफैक्चरिंग टाइम सो दिस प्रोसेस इज ऑफ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट इंटरेस्ट एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इट इन डिटेल सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई हैव क्लासिफाइड द बेसिक स्टेप्स इन द फोटोलिथोग्राफी इन टू द फोर कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट कैटेगरी इज फोटो रजिस्ट कोटिंग देन वी हैव अलाइनमेंट एंड एक्सपोजर देन वी हैव डेवलपमेंट सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल द फोटो रजिस्ट कोटिंग इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल सी द अलाइनमेंट एंड एक्सपोजर एंड इट्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स एज वेल ओके देन वी विल बी सींग द डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस सो नाउ If I classify the old technology or the steps present in the old technology, we have photo resist coating and development. So, in the photo resist coating, we have the wafer cleaning, dehydration bake, spin coating primer, and the photo resist. Then we have soft bake. In the development phase, we have the alignment and exposure, development, and the pattern inspection. Then we have the hard bake. So here you see that the alignment and exposure is coming in the development phase. Okay, so we don't have any separate phase for alignment and exposure, but in the advanced technology, we have the separate alignment and exposure step. Okay, so now here we have the wafer cleaning which we are doing outside. our system so we have the track stepper integrated system which is performing all of these steps it is a machine or it is a device which is doing all of these steps simultaneously in itself so we will be discussing about the step tracker integrated system also in a further video and now if i talk about the pr coating the wafer cleaning is the step which is which we are doing outside the step tracker integrated system as i have already told you then we have the pr coating what is pr coating we are coating one layer of photo resist on the wafer so we have pre bake and the primer coating we are applying the pri primer so that the adhesion power of the photo resist will be made high with the primer okay so then we have the photo resist spin coating okay we will be seeing it in detail then we have soft bake okay soft bake is done to increase the hardness of the photo resist otherwise it's a liquid type of material it will flow off the wafer now we have the alignment and exposure it is a different step then we have the post exposure bake and then we have the development phase in the development phase we are removing the softened out portions of the photo resist in the alignment and exposure we are aligning our mask on the wafer and according to the mask we are providing the light of the particular intensity and this will change the structure and the characteristics of the photo resist underneath it now we have the hard bake and the pattern inspection step so we will be discussing about all of them now this is actually the integrated system so if i talk about the track stepper so this is the track system over here okay now we have the wafer cleaning as i told you it is done outside this track stepper integrated system this is the wafer we are getting from the previous process we will clean it we will provide it to the surface preparation step now after that we have the photo resist coating then soft bake then alignment and exposure okay alignment and exposure is done separately in a photo cell then we have the post exposure bake then the development phase then the hard bake and then we do the inspection if after the inspection the wafer is approved it will be going for the iron implantation or the etching step otherwise if it is rejecting rejected then we will be stripping off the photo resist the photo resist layer is not required now we are we have rejected the 
wafer or the photoresist after the inspection and now after stripping off the photoresist we will sand it back to the cleaning stage so after the cleaning stage again all of the steps will repeat so i hope now you understood it now in the wafer cleaning step we have this uh, p well so this is the substrate over here okay so this is the substrate over here we have the p well over here so here we have sti layer usg layer i have already told you about both of them and if you still not remembering it i will be discussing it again in the upcoming videos now here we have the polysilicon layer okay this sti and usg layer are used for the isolation purpose so this thing you you must understand now here we have the polysilicon layer and this is this black uh, line is representing the gate oxide it is very thin and this is the reason it is shown here as a line only so now here we have the polysilicon layer first of all i will be cleaning the uppermost polysilicon surface okay after that i will be doing the pre bake okay so here we are doing the pre bake and after the cleaning there may be some deionized water which is left behind we will be evaporating it as well so now after the pre bake we are using the primer coating and here we have a coating of the primer this blue coat represents the primer coating which is increasing the adhesion power of the photoresist okay otherwise it will flow off now here we have the photoresist coating so you can see here this is the photoresist and this is the primer over the primer we have the photoresist now this is the soft bake process in the soft bake process we are decreasing the thickness of the photoresist what we are doing we are giving some high temperature to the photoresist and because of high temperature some liquid molecules from the photoresist will evaporate out and when the liquid molecules will evaporate out its thickness will decrease okay now when the thickness is decreased it will be becoming more harder because of the evaporation of the more liquid particles from it now it is now a jelly type of structure which is harder than the previous photoresist which was li liquid now the alignment and exposure for the alignment and exposure you can see as here we are using the gate mask okay so this is the gate mask over here we are using the gate mask as a as a glass only and we are painting it black whenever we don't want our lights to change the structure of the photoresist so here we have the black coating which will prevent the uv lights or the visible light from changing the structure of the photoresist underneath this Uh, black mask okay so this is how we are having proper alignment and then we will be uh, exposing our uh, visible light or the uv light on this surface okay so now we are having this exposure step so here you can see this is our light so underneath this black mask we don't have any change in the structure of the photoresist it was in the previous uh, diagram also it was shown as a sky blue uh, photoresist layer here also it is shown as a sky blue photoresist layer sky blue represents that it is not having changes in its structure this yellow part represents that we have changed photoresist over here okay so here we are having some changes in the properties of the photoresist so some linkages will be made king some bonds will be breaking and here either it will be becoming thickened out or it will be becoming softened out so depending upon the type of photoresist whether it is negative or positive photoresist this yellow part will be differing from the sky blue part so now after that we are doing the post exposure bake and after the post exposure bake also this thickness will decrease somewhat okay and after that we have development phase okay so here in the development phase we are removing all of the yellow part okay this was the positive photoresist okay in the positive photoresist we remove all of the yellow part all of the exposed part if you remember if you have able to recall it then you may go to the previous video where i talked about the positive and the negative photoresist so here this uh, yellow part become more so soluble and in the development phase when i uh, use some chemicals to dissolve this yellow part the yellow part easily dissolved whereas this uh, sky blue part was harder and it stayed there 
then we had the hard bake process again we are supplying some high temperature don't worry we are going to discuss about all of these process in detail first of all i wanted to show you the uh, pictures of all of these process so that uh, there will be some picture in your mind whenever i will be talking about all of the processes then we do the pattern inspection so in the pattern inspection we are just seeing where we wanted the actual photo resist and where we have the real photo resist after this process okay we compare both of them if the photo resist is present on a different location than we wanted then we reject it otherwise we accept it okay so now after that we are talking about all of the processes in detail first of all i talked about the wafer cleaning process in the wafer cleaning process as the name suggests we are removing all of the contaminants or all of the undesired particles from the wafer surface so we are removing contaminants we are removing the particulate matter we are reducing the pin holes and the other defects which are present on the uppermost layer so in the previous case what was the uppermost layer it was the polysilicon layer okay we can have the silicon dioxide layer as the uppermost layer as well so instead of this polysilicon layer we can have the silicon dioxide layer as well we have to reduce the pin holes and the other defects from the uppermost layer we can uh, improve the photo resist addition okay by increasing the cleanliness over the upper surface layer okay whenever we have more and more particulate matters then the photo resist may not be able to properly adhere to the surface of the basic uh, material that is uh, polysilicon layer or the silicon dioxide layer if i want my photo resist to adhere or it has more adhesive power to the uh, downward layer then it should be very much clean if it has very much particulate matters then it is very difficult for us to uh, make a layer of photo resist on this surface so what are the basic steps in the cleaning process first of all we will be doing doing the chemical cleaning for that i will be taking the wafer i will be dipping it in a chemical and then after that i will be rinsing it if you want to discuss in detail about the cleaning you can go to the previous videos i have discussed it twice once in the previous videos where i just discuss about the rca cleaning and second when i was discussing about the oxidation process there i discussed it as the pre oxidation cleaning so we can do uh, any of these process here as well so now we first of all we are dipping the wafer in the chemical then we will be rinsing it with the deionized water then we will be drying it okay so let's take the example of a washing machine we have a washing machine in the washing machine we have the soap okay so in the soap we dip the clothes the dirty clothes we are dipping it in it and now what happens we are uh, rotating it so that the dirt will uh, go off from the clothes and then we are rinsing it in the water okay so what we do after taking it out from the soap so after that we rinse it in the clean water okay after that we want to dry our cloth uh, to dry our cloth what we do we rotate the uh, spinner in a very high speed so that the water particles will be moving outside so same thing we will be doing over here okay so we have some older ways as well like we have the high pressure nitrogen blow off we put the very high pressure of nitrogen on the surface of the wafer then we can use the rotating brush scrubber as well and we can use the high pressure water stream as well okay so this is the process that i was talking about we have the chemical clean we are di uh, dipping the wafers into the chemicals which are cleaning the wafers so it is like the soap in which we are uh, dipping our uh, dirty clothes okay so now after that we are sending it to the rinsing phase we are sending the cloth to the rinsing phase where we are washing it with the fresh water so here also we are not actually taking the tap water we are taking the deionized water and we are rinsing it in the deionized water so that these chemicals will not be staying here on the surface of the wafer for long if these chemicals are present on the surface of the wafer they can uh, interfere in the next processes so there is this reason for this reason we are removing these chemicals from the surface and we are using the deionized water after that we are spinning the wafers and we are spin drying it like we spin dry in the washing machine now 
in the uh, photolithography process the first process that is happening in the step tracker integrated system that is pre bake so here we are doing the dehydration bake what is dehydration bake which means we are removing all of the water vapor so when we remove clothes from the washing machine what happens some of the water particles were still there we have to make these clothes completely dry so what we do we again dehydrate them we put these clothes in the sunlight so now here also we are doing the dehydration bake we are supplying the heat like with the help of sunlight we were supplying the heat to the clothes here also we are supplying the heat with the dehydration bake process which process this process is removing the moisture from the wafer surface by increasing the heat heat level over the surface or by giving the temperature over there so if i have uh, the wafer the dehydrated wafer and then i want to put the photoresist over it the dehydrated surface and then i want to put the photoresist layer there will be more adhesion okay so it promotes the adhesion between the photoresist and the surface this process is usually done at around 100 degree celsius and then after this this process we are doing the primer coating okay so what is the primer coating we are promoting the addition power of the photoresist to the wafer surface so what is the most widely used primer it is hexamethyl disilazine hmds okay so you can remember this name and this is a very widely used primer hmds wafer coating is done prior to the pr spin coating okay so so that the pr spin coating when performed it will be having more addition with the surface so it is usually performed in c2 with the pre bake so in c2 only in the pre bake uh, step only in the step tracker integrated system we are doing this process and we are using chill plates also to cool down the wafer before the pr coating actually we are using the chill plates after every heating step okay whether it is pre bake whether it is uh, post exposure bake after every baking process we are using the chill plates why we are using the chill plate so that in the next step we will be having the wafer at the room temperature and we don't have any extra conditions associated with the wafer okay wafer should be at the normal ambient temperature so that the next steps will be performed very easily now you can see here this is the pre bake and the primer wafer coating step okay we are uh, giving the wafer some hot temperature from the downside and this is how the water particles or the water molecules are evaporating here so we are making the vapors from the waters so this is the dehydration bake so now here we have the primer vapor coating in the primer vapor coating we are using the hmds vapor and in the hot plate only we are putting a layer of hmds vapor it's a simple uh, step now after that we have wafer cooling i have already told you why we need to uh, cool our wafer okay so temperature can affect the pr viscosity so the next step is photoresist layer put off we put off the photoresist layer on the wafer with the photoresist spinning process okay if i have the uh, high temperature wafer then what would happen if i have high temperature wafer if i am putting some liquid over it it will have the change in the viscosity and it will be going more because of high temperature okay so it will affect the pr viscosity and uh, it will be affecting the pr spin coating thickness okay if it is less viscous it will be flowing easily and if it will be flowing easily it will be lesser and lesser thick if i have to choose a particular thickness then i cannot increase the temperature much and for that i need to cool down the wafer and i will be using some chill plates for that so now coming to the spin coating in the spin coating what we are doing actually we are putting the photoresist on the wafer surface in the spin coating step itself we have the wafer wafer is put on the spinning chunk which is uh, present in the vacuum and then we are putting the liquid photoresist with a tap type of material so liquid photoresist when fall on this wafer this uh, wafer will be experiencing the centrifugal force because of the rotating wafer and this centrifugal force will move the photoresist outward in the uniform manner so we 
will be having a uniform layer of photoresist over the wafer. So don't worry, we are going to see it with the help of pictures also. So now wafer sit on the vacuum chunk and we are rotating it at a very high speed. So liquid photoresist is applied at the center of the wafer and then the photoresist will be spreading out with the help of centrifugal force and we will be getting an even coating on the wafer surface. Now coming to the viscosity, as I already told you, the photoresist viscosity is a very important parameter for the photoresist coating. So I know fluid sticks on the solid surface and the viscosity is affecting the photoresist thickness in the spin coating. If it is very viscous, it will be giving me high thickness. If it is less viscous, it is giving me lesser thickness. It is related to the PR type and the temperature. If I'm increasing temperature, we are decreasing the viscosity. If I have different photoresist, it will they will be having different viscosity and for the same process and the force for the same temperature i will be getting different thickness of the photoresist layer okay so we require very high spin rate for the uniform coating okay so let's see uh, what are the relationship of the photoresist thickness to the spin rate and the viscosity okay so if you can see here we have the spin rate and here we have the thickness so okay here if i am increasing the spin rate if i increasing the spin rate what happens the photoresist will be having lesser and lesser thickness okay for a particular thickness I am uh, seeing at a higher and higher spin rate so if I am increasing the spin rate thickness will be decreasing okay now if I am uh, increasing the thickness okay for a particular uh, spin rate so you can see if I have different type of photoresist this 20 CST 27 CST are the different types of photoresist present over here and now you can see uh, we have the different uh, type of thickness for different type of photoresists as well. Now you can see the dynamic spin rate. Okay, so as I increase the time, the thickness of the photoresist will increase and also you can see here it is increasing linearly then all after a certain time it will saturate. Okay, so the thickness will saturate after a certain time. After that it will not increase and then it, if I still give the photoresist then it will decrease rapidly. Now the photoresist spin coater. Okay, what is it? This is the main part of this uh, step and uh, here we are spreading the photoresist on the spinning wafer surface. Wafer is held on the vacuum chunk as I have already told you. So this vacuum chunk is present here and here we are having the wafer and we have to rotate it and then uh, we have a slow spin at the initial level which is around 500 rpm rotations per minute. We can ramp it up to 3000 to 7000 rotation per minute or rpm. So we have the spin coater in that we have an automatic wafer loading system from robots of track system actually in the full track stepper integrated system we have robots to transfer the wafer from one step to another step so from one process to another process we are sending the wafer with the help of robots so also in the spin coater we are sending the wafer with the help of the robot we have the vacuum chunk we have the resist contaminants and the drain as well I will be showing you all of these things we have some exhaust as well so that if I have some exhaust uh, photoresist, it can be flowing out from it easily. Then we have a spin motor which is controllable. I can control its rotations okay, and the number of rotations per minute as well. Now we have the dispenser and the dispenser pump as well. And then we have edge bead removal system. We will be discussing about edge bead removal system in detail. So you, you can see here we have the photoresist spin coater. Here we have uh, the photoresist. We are supplying the photoresist from here. This is the tap type of material which is sending the photoresist from its surface. This is this tap type of structure is sending the photoresist and this photoresist will fall on the wafer and it will spread evenly. Then here you can see we have the exhaust. This is the chunk. This is the water sleeve. Okay. 
so now here we have this to be edge bead removal system i will be talking about it here we have the drain and uh, this is uh, present here in the vacuum system and you can see the chunk is rotating okay so now here what happens we have the pr dispenser nozzle this tap type of structure is called the photoresist dispenser nozzle so now from this nozzle we are spreading the photoresist on the wafer and we are rotating the wafer and here we have the spindle the chunk to the vacuum pump so now you can see uh, we initially put the wafer and the then we do the pr suck back okay so that this initial uh, wafer will spread evenly when this uh, spindle is rotating okay so now when we initially fall the pr material then it will spread evenly so that we don't have any non uniformity present so now after the moment when it is spread it uniformly over the wafer then we will we will be again switching on this pr dispenser nozzle okay so here this was pr suck back step so that the pr will be uh, spreading uniformly over this surface now we have the pr spin coating we are uh, spreading the pr the excess photoresist will be spreading and we will be getting un the uniform photoresist so this is the pr suck back step here we applied the photoresist here and this photoresist will be sucked back by this dispenser nozzle now we will be rotating the spindle and we will be letting this uh, photoresist to spread evenly or uniformly over the wafer so we will just to rotate the uh, the chunk and this is how the pr will be spreading over the full surface okay so once this pr will be spread it over the full surface it will start falling off from the wafer okay so now after that we are doing the edge bead removal okay we are removing the photoresist from the edges as at the edges we don't want any kind of transistor or uh, uh, the mosfet so that we don't have any kind of non uniformity present on the edges okay so at the edges we have to remove this photoresist layer we don't want any kind of device at the edges so for that we are using the edge bead removal or ebr process so photoresist spread to the edges and back side as well the photoresist could flake off during the mechanical handling and cause particles so we require front and back chemical edge bead removal and we can also use the front optical edge bead removal so let's see what is it so here we this is the process of edge bead removal so here we are using a solvent over here okay so this solvent is applied here with the help of this nozzle this is the nozzle it is spreading the solvent over here and this nozzle is collecting the uh, solvent which is removed from here okay so now here this chunk is again rotating so now this portion of the wafer is in contact with the solvent now if it is rotating the full uh, wafer rotation will be taking place and at the full wafer we will be having this solvent so at the, all of the edges at the full circumference of the wafer we will be having the solvent present okay so now it is ready for the soft bake process now we have the photoresist uniform coating over the surface we don't have any photoresist over the edges now we have this uh, wafer surface which is required for the soft bake process now we can also do the optical edge bead removal as well here in the previous step we were doing the edge bead removal with the help of the chemicals here we will be using the lights okay so after alignment and exposure exposure we can have wafer edge exposure step we can expose the photoresist at edge dissolved during the development phase only okay so you can see here we are using the light okay or the, uh, the uv lights as well so now we can uh, choose the light or the waveform based upon the type of photoresist over here so here this is the wave which is uh, falling on this wafer's edge and this is removing the photoresist layer from the edge and this is called the optical edge bead removal as i know the photoresist property changes with the light and this is how this light is able to change the photoresist property from the edges and it can easily fall off from the edges and it will be giving me perfectly 
remove photo resist removed edges so this is how i will i will again uh, rotate this wafer and the photo resist which is which structure is changed with the help of the light will be falling off okay so this is how i will be getting a patterned photo resist so after that we have the soft bake process again uh, as the name suggests it's a baking process we are giving the high temperature in this process we are evaporating most of the solvents present in the photo resist so the liquids present in the photo resist are evaporated its thickness will be decreased and it will be becoming more hardened out okay solvents help to make the thin photo resist but absorb radiations and affect addition power as well okay the thin the photo resist it will be flowing off very easily the thinner photo resist flow off easily it will absorb the radiations as well so now we require require it to be a thicker photo resist layer and a hardened out photo resist layer for that we are using the soft baking process and soft baking time and temperature are determined by the matrix evaluations and uh, after this all of this mathematical computations we soft bake our wafer and if we over bake it will be polymerized all of the photo resist will be polymerized and after it is polymerized its sensitivity will be largely affected the sensitivity will be very less okay after uh, soft baking process if the pattern is under baked so in the under baking process we are affecting addition it will be flowing off okay we are not removing all of the liquid solvents so that it will be uh, not very hard and it will flow off easily so it affects the addition so now soft bake is performed using the hot plates or the convection oven or the infrared oven or the microwave oven we are just supplying the heat so you can see we are using the hot plates here over the hot plates we have the wafer okay so this is the hot plate mechanism in the convection oven we are using the batch system we have the batch of wafers present here in the convection oven and we are uh, giving the high temperature with the nitrogen ambient purge okay so that it will not be having any other kind of reactions this is the microwave oven in the microwave oven we are giving the microwaves here on the surface so here we have the photo resist present over the surface and we are giving directly the microwaves which are increasing its temperature this is our microwave source now coming to the hot plates hot plates are the widely used uh, soft baking process in the industry we are baking backside heating the wafer and there is no surface crust in the hot plate mechanism so it is actually present in the inline track system only so this is uh, the reason it is widely used in the industry after that again uh, i have the wafer cooling step we need to cool down the ambient temperature water cooled chilled plate again we will be using so we know the thermal expansion of the silicon is at the rate of 2.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 Uh, per degree celsius so th the silicon must also have expanded we have to remove this expansion for 8 inches wafer that is 200 mm wafer 1 degree change causes 0.5 micrometer difference in the diameter and this is the reason we are doing the wafer cooling so that it will be again coming back to its original shape so these are the references i hope you will be uh, going through these references these are the really am amazing books and if you want to uh, learn this topic in the great detail you can refer this books so now i hope you like this session if you have any other queries you can put the query in the comment or you can reach out to me i will be trying to help you i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and also do share it with your friends thank you so much